Hey guys, welcome to physics, high school physics. And today we're going to look at motion. We're going to look at speed, velocity, and acceleration. Now we're following the Cambridge syllabus, vaguely following the Cambridge syllabus. And um, that's what we're basing it on. But this physics is physics. It doesn't matter what you're up to. So um, let's dive into this and see where we're going to get to. So bear with me while we nip over here and here we go. Right. High school physics, that's what we're doing. Let's get rid of that one. And today we're going to understand, hopefully, speed, velocity and acceleration. OK, speed, velocity and acceleration. Now, guys, you know quite a bit of this already and maybe you don't realize how much you do know. Let's just tweak this lighting, guys. Bear with me. OK, so. Where's the lighting crew when you need them? Right, here we are. Speed, velocity and acceleration. Now, a lot of you have seen speed signs along the, along the roads for ages. So if you've seen a sign which says 50 on it or 30, you know that's the speed. You guys know that already. So it doesn't matter if it's kilometers per hour or miles per hour. You know that speed is equal to two things, distance over time. Guys, it doesn't matter if it's miles per hour, miles, distance per hour, time, or kilometers per hour, but what, what it does matter in physics is that we use meters and our time is seconds, all right? So our units, we can get from this, <laughs> something's on the move guys our units we can get from the equation that's the great thing with physics is that speed is going to be meters per second or meters seconds minus one i know it looks confusing but it's not that is that and that comes from the equation so it all links through really nicely okay so that's the first thing speed now there's another little problem here guys because we tend to mix up our words in physics and we mix up the words speed and velocity. Now, velocity, while we're here, let's just cover this. Velocity is just a speed with direction. Okay, now we're going to come back to that because that gets a bit technical later on. But speed is distance over time. But as soon as we give it a direction, it turns into a velocity. All right, now it's like mass and weight, all right? Mass and weight are two words we kind of mix around here and there, right? Someone says, um, how much do you weigh? You might say you weigh 75 kilograms. Okay, well, that, that, they don't ask you how much do you mass? Yeah, because we mix the words up. So what we have to remember is we've got the language of physics and the language of English, and there's a little bit of a gray area in between. And speed and velocity are one of those things that we do interchange, okay? But as soon as we start talking of velocities, we should be putting in a direction. So 30 miles an hour, speed, 30 miles an hour north, velocity. Easy, good, right. I think things are falling around on my desk, guys, so bear with me. Okay, let's take a little look at graphs. All right, so one of the things you, you might get in your exams or in your tests would be a graph and you might get a graph of distance against time. OK. If you get a graph of distance against time, then if you think about the slope, the slope of this graph would be distance A over B. So the slope or the gradient, depending on what you want to call it, is equal to A over B, which equals distance would be meters over seconds. So the slope is equivalent to, equivalent to the speed. Something's just gone ping in the computer. Okay, for a distance time graph, the slope is the speed. All right, and it makes sense 
because it's A over B, which is meters over seconds. Okay, guys? All right, so that's they, these are nice little graphs to start with. Now, the next graph you might get might be a little bit trickier. It might be a graph of, uh, you might end up with speed at speed against time. Okay, now we're gonna stick it in seconds and meters per second, okay? So we've got a little old graph here. We're gonna to stick to a straight line because that's easiest. And with our straight line, let's look at the slope to start with, okay? So here's the slope. I'm gonna call it gradient this time, just because you need to be aware of both words. So the gradient here of our slope is gonna be, look at the units, meters per second divided by seconds. Well, you recognize these units, guys. Could be writ written down as meters per second squared or meters per second squared. These are all the same thing. This is what makes physics confusing, is that we have this, you know, lots of different ways of saying the same thing, all right? So this is the gradient. And look at these units. You know what these units are. These are the units for acceleration, okay? So if that was a hill, and you were walking up that hill, then you would say, well, that it's got a uniform slope. It's got a constant slope. So this has got constant acceleration. This one up here, this has got a constant slope, okay? If that was a hill, it's the same old plod, plod, plod up the hill, okay? So it's a constant slope. So this one's got constant speed, constant speed. This one's got constant acceleration. Now with constant speed, if we were gonna draw this as a speed against time graph, this one here, if this was a speed against time, if it's a constant speed, it's gonna be a flat line. This one here is a constant slope. That's a constant. That number seven, it's gonna be seven all the way along. So it's a constant slope. So this gradient gives us this. This gradient here gives us constant acceleration. That means if you're going 10 meters a second faster every second, because that's what an acceleration is, it's a change of speed per time, you're getting faster and faster and faster and faster. So the speed um, against the time is going to be increasing. The, the acceleration is going to mean your speed's going faster and faster and faster but it is a constant acceleration. Now guys, this is, this is like jumping out of a tree, okay? You, when you let go of the tree, you're gonna be falling slowly, but then you're gonna go faster and faster and faster until you hit the ground, okay? Because their resistance isn't gonna really slow you up from a tree. And um, G is your constant acceleration, and therefore your speed is gonna increase all the time. Now, the other thing we get with this one here, guys, is we can work out the area, all right? And when you work out the area in here, the area, think about it, is speed times time, okay? All right, that area would be speed times time. Yeah, all right, so if you've got that in your head, then that area is going to be equal to Let's put it in units, meters per second times seconds. Hey, what do the seconds do? Well, you can tell me. You know they're gonna cancel, okay? Which leaves us meters. And what's meters? Well, that's distance. So the area under a speed time graph is the distance. And I know it's a triangle, guys, but if, if it was a, a graph, if, if it's a graph like this, speed against time, if it's a constant speed, okay? If you're zipping along here at 50 miles per hour for two hours, you know you, you would have covered 200 miles, 50 miles per hour for two hours. If it's 50 kilometers per hour for two hours, you'd have traveled 100 kilometers because it's the area. It's 50 times two, we'll give you 100 just because it's a funny shape, like a triangle, or if it's a curvy graph, it doesn't make any difference, guys. It's still the area underneath. 
So the area underneath is the distance traveled. Okay. Any questions on that? If there are, put them in the chit chat. Right. What else should we talk about? Um, I'm just having a little look at the syllabus, guys, to make sure we cover everything. Let's take a, one more little thing here and um, acceleration. Let's just remember a few things. If acceleration is negative, if it's negative, it means it's got deceleration. Okay, so negative is deceleration, means it's slowing down, all right? Acceleration should also have a direction, all right? We need to give it a direction because technically acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time, okay? And we are very lazy in physics. We call it delta V over delta T. Okay. The change in velocity over the time taken to make that change. All right. So if you want to get the change of something, you'll take the initial velocity and the final velocity, subtract one from the other, and then you can find out what the change is. Okay. So you could take the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time, and that will give you the acceleration. All right, good. Um, what else can we have here? Um, if you had linear motion, you'd have constant acceleration. Okay, so that's what we could call that. We could call that linear motion if we've got constant acceleration. And um, with free fall, you've just got to be aware that if the question says like an apple falling out of a tree, then um, who would have thought, if an apple's gonna fall out of the tree, the air resistance is not going to affect it much. If you've got something falling from a great height, okay? Like, a, like someone jumping out of a plane, yeah? So they're jumping out of 12, at 12,000 feet or 4,000 meters, then the air resistance would be so great that eventually it will act upwards, which is, going to slow them, not slow them down, but reduce the rate of the acceleration. So they'll reach a terminal velocity, okay? Because the forces will be equal and opposite. So the force pulling them down to earth would be opposed by air resistance acting up. All right, guys? And so therefore, from a great height, you have to think about air resistance. And so we'll reach terminal velocity. So the acceleration will get less and less and less. If you jump out of a plane, you accelerate a lot to start with. And after a few seconds, the air resistance is so great that you no longer accelerate. You don't go any faster. You move with a constant speed. Yeah. It depends upon your shape and size and what you're wearing. Would be about um, 140 miles an hour or thereabouts and whatever that is in kilometers per hour, okay? It, and like I say, it's going to be different for different people, different objects. Good. Right. I think that'll do for starters with motion and um, acceleration. Okay. And speed. I'm just checking the syllabus. We will take a little look at some of this later on. But until then, that's our opening shot. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope that helps. Okay. I will see you next time. Let's say goodbye. Off we go. Goodbye. <laughs>